So we got some really big rumors out of Sony regarding the A7S III. So it's going to be the world's first backlit RGBW stacked sensor. So you're going to get 68% better, this is quoted from the rumor, 68% better low light performance. You're going to get, because it's a stack sensor, 10-bit 422 and 4K30 and you're going to get 4K60 at 8-bit 420. So, you know, first off, huge deal, right? I think it's very feasible that they could put something very similar to the A9 sensor in there in order to, uh, in order, which, which performs very much on par through a lot of the ISO range with the A7S II and A7S. So, you know, they, they could very well use a very similar 24 megapixel sensor in order to give you downsampling, in order to give you 6K options. Because, you know, the direction that all of these imaging technologies is going is very, very high resolution, right? That's not going to change. It's been going that way for a while, but we're seeing that really amplified out of things like the GH5 firmware update, where you now have 6K anamorphic as well as 4K. 60 in this format camera like this this sorry micro four thirds format camera like that's a big deal this would be a huge response out of sony if they can solve some of the heating issues which it seems like they will be able to because of the stacked sensor technology on the a9 that by and large doesn't overheat because of the stacks because of how because of how genuinely and purely efficient that sensor is at getting through data Right, that's the big deal is how, how efficiently can you get through data? Not how fast, but how efficiently can you get through the data? And the A9 can do it, can do it, you know, 20 frames a second at 6K, which is a big deal for, you know, quite a while until the buffer is full, right? Or you can go with video options like we will see on the A7S, where, you know, all that, that color space is substantially less than what you're getting out of a still. Out of the still, you're getting 12 or 14 bit, right? And on the A9, I think you're getting up to 20 frames per second in 12 bit, which is like 64 times as much data or whatever. I'm, get, I'm gonna get that number wrong and someone in the comments is gonna fix it. I'm okay with that. It's a ton more data. So 10 bit 422, is still a ton of data, but it's a lot less than an image. So that's why it makes sense that that could do, you know, 24, 25p in 10 bit 422. Now, I think the thing that we really need to see out of Sony with the A7S Mark III or A9S or whatever is substantially better autofocus te technology and performance, right? We can't deal with contrast detect anymore. That's what's really getting people out of the A7S's and into the A7R. So if they want video shooters to use the A7S, shooters who will use the A7S, by and large, it seems like, are people who are wanting to be able to use some autofocus functionality. Not all the time necessarily, but have, be able to use it and use it effectively. If you look at guys like Locke Chung, formerly of DRTV, he'll say that you know it's only whiffed twice in a critical shot in the year or so that he's had it. But, you know, that's not, that's not a lot of other people's experience and it's not fast enough for a lot of other people, right? So even putting something like 117 phase detect autofocus points like are, are in the A7 model, like that would be a huge, huge boost. I think they should put something like the 325 that we're seeing on Fuji cameras in there, but that's a different matter entirely. It needs on sensor, phase detect autofocus points. But the A7S Mark III, this is a huge deal, right? Like, because it's not just the spec that's really cool. It's not just if it gets PDAF, that's really cool. It's a big step saying, look at us, we can do it too. And it's kind of been rumored that the reason why Sony didn't get this out was because of the GH5. With it announced and with the firmware announced so far in advance saying, this is what we're going to give you, Sony's got to know that they got to improve their autofocus, but more importantly, they have to offer 10-bit 422 if they want users to stay with that platform instead of switching over to the GH5. 
They have to because it's a competitive market space. The video market in particular is a much more competitive market space than the stills market, where you see a lot of people saying, I'm just gonna buy a Canon because that's what I have, or Canon has my brand loyalty for whatever reason, I'm not minimizing that, I'm saying most still shooters are Canon shooters even still. And so, you know, Sony's saying we have to be competitive in a competitive marketplace. That's also a big deal because Canon isn't doing that. Nikon is really trying to do that, but again, they haven't actually made a mirrorless camera yet. That's in the works, but the GH5 is a huge threat. Panasonic is a huge threat to Sony. Now you can match up the GH5 and the EVA1 and Panasonic's other very cam options. Sony has the F5, the F55, the F65, the new Sony Alta, uh, Cine Alta Venice, you're gonna have to be able to use an A7S Mark III or an A9S with that camera. Like, that's a logical thing that, that users of a certain variety will need to be able to do. And so, by putting those really high-end features in this camera, Sony is staying with the market. They're staying just a touch behind in terms of product release in order to be sure that they can get it to the customer with a larger body like we can expect since the A9 and a larger battery, you can expect much better, and, and the stack sensor, much better heat management, which is a huge deal, right? That's a, that's a tiebreaker for a lot of people who don't know anything about Sony. They're like, oh, I would never do it because of overheating issues, but they're fixing those through firmware and through better hardware. So I think this is just a really, assuming it's, it's true, which it's a rumor, could be a very strong very strong way forward from Sony, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that turns out. So thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.